balancing Keynesian and neoclassical models. Can we compare finding the balance between Keynesian and neoclassical models to the challenge of riding two horses simultaneously? When a circus performer stands on two horses, with a foot on each one, much of the excitement for the viewer lies in contemplating the gap between the two. As modern economists ride into the future on two horses, with one foot on the short-term Keynesian perspective, and one foot on the long-term neoclassical perspective, the balancing act may look uncomfortable, but there does not seem to be any way to avoid it. Each approach, Keynesian and neoclassical, has its strengths and weaknesses. The short-term Keynesian model, built on the importance of aggregate demand as a cause of business cycles in a degree of wage and price rigidity, does a sound job of explaining many recessions and why cyclical unemployment rises and falls. By focusing on the short-run aggregate demand adjustments, Keynesian economics risks overlooking the long-term causes of economic growth or the natural rate of unemployment that exists even when the economy is producing at potential GDP. The neoclassical model, with its emphasis on aggregate supply, focuses on the underlying determinants of output and employment in markets, and thus tends to put more emphasis on economic growth and how labor markets work. However, the neoclassical view is not especially helpful in explaining why unemployment moves up and down over short time horizons of a few years. Nor is the neoclassical model especially helpful when the economy is mired in an especially deep and long-lasting recession, like the 1930s Great Depression. Keynesian economics tends to view inflation as a price that might sometimes be paid for lower unemployment. Neoclassical economics tends to view inflation as a cost that offers no offsetting gains in terms of lower unemployment. Economics cannot, however, be summed up as an argument between one group of economists who are pure Keynesians and another group who are pure neoclassicists. Instead, many mainstream economists believe both the Keynesian and neoclassical perspectives. Robert Solow, the Nobel laureate in economics, described the dual approach in this way. At short time scales, I think, something sort of Keynesian is a good approximation, and surely better than anything straight neoclassical. At very long time scales, the interesting questions are best studied in the neoclassical framework, and attention to the Keynesian side of things would be a minor distraction. At the 5 to 10 year time scale, we have to piece things together as best we can, and look for a hybrid model that will do the job. Many modern economists spend considerable time and energy trying to construct models that blend the most attractive aspects of the Keynesian and neoclassical approaches. It is possible to construct a complex mathematical model, where aggregate demand and sticky wages and prices matter, in the short run, but wages, prices, and aggregates simply adjust in the long run. However, creating an overall model that encompasses both short-term Keynesian and long-term neoclassical models, is not easy.